Good morning or good afternoon, everybody, uh, depending on where you're located. This is Kurt with Marco, and I wanted to thank you all for joining our webinar here this morning. Um, first, I want to apologize for the technical difficulties that we had a couple weeks ago. Uh, WebEx had performed some updates and did not make us aware of it here at Marco. So I do apologize for that, but we have some great content that we're going to run through here today. And of course, like at all of our webinars, at the end of the webinar, uh, we will draw for a $25 Amazon gift card uh, for all that are in attendance here today. So with that, I will turn it over to Tracy Coleman. Wonderful. Thanks, Kurt, and thanks everybody for taking some time to uh, to review today's webinar. With me, um, again, I do have Dave Anderson, who is our dedicated solutions trainer with the Software Solutions Group. Um, for those that uh, haven't met him, um, definitely brings great content, and and will continue to uh, get in front of you guys to really maximize your your use of M files. So happy that he could join us. Um, today's focus is going to be around M-File security. Security is definitely top of mind for, for many um, and, and changes often with uh, making sure that your organization is not at risk. So we're going to talk, uh, talk about not only securing your servers, but different ways that you can encrypt the file data and overall vault maintenance to just ensure that uh, everything continues to, to run in, in top order. As we conclude today, along with answering any questions that anybody has, we're going to also give you uh, an insight into all of the other technical resources you and your employees have access to 24 seven. So we'll, lead our, we'll, we'll end with uh, bringing you into that content. So let's get started. Securing of the servers, um, you know, first and foremost, does your organization have a process for keeping the operating system and software that MFILES is running on up to date? For those on the call that are in the IT world, you um, probably are well aware that Microsoft has ended their support for Server 2012. And so that is just one example of being cognizant of um, areas of, of software versions and jumping into uh, an OS that is supported. With the risk of um, you know, old versions, updates not being received, those usually are targeted um, by many to be holes in your uh, organization to allow entry. And so ensuring that um, not only the M file server, if you are running capture, making sure that those operating systems um, are up to date, not only with the, the version of it, but then also the uh, reoccurring updates that Microsoft puts in front of you, making sure that we're rebooting those servers timely as well. Um, another aspect, making sure that those that have access to the server um, are well aware of um, the software that's being installed on those devices. Uh, maybe your strategy is to, uh, if that user needs access to the server, they don't necessarily use their day-to-day -day Active Directory user, but put another layer of security that they have to um, authenticate as administrative level in individual, so you have every aspect to be able to audit and set their, their permissions according to uh, what kind of work they need to do on those devices. Do not install any software that isn't scanned, um, making sure that you have appropriate mechanisms in place to be auditing and, and scanning those devices, making sure that you mitigate the risks um, that could be presented to you. Um, network security, I touched on this a little bit in, in my prior statements, is limiting the access of the personnel that have access to, to the server. We oftentimes do recommend that if users are needing to be admins of M files, that work unfolds uh, through the lens of the M files server, and that because there are certain configuration aspects object configurations, backup configurations, um, things like that, that you have to be on that source server in order to configure it. 
So how do you structure users to have nice, secure access and bring them um, the training that they need to ensure that that system remains whole? Obstructing ransomware, um, again, another um, term that is unfortunately probably heard daily in, in the world of IT. First and foremost, that virtual M drive typically, it might not necessarily be the M drive in your, your environment, but it is that virtual lens into your M files vaults. Um, know that that cannot be, um, documents and files in there can't be an, edited in, unless they are checked out. In order to be checked out, those users have to have a license inside of M files. You have to have the ability to edit it. Um, so doing that checkout operation, either through the M files desktop or the M files API. So again, talking about mitigating the risk and why M files is a good solution it provides a design that really puts multiple layers in between gaining access to those files. We like to be prepared, so what if, right? M files is not currently aware of anything that would have the capability to interact with the M files API. Um, if, however, things would unfold, remember in its design, it also is not doing anything but versioning that document. So if something by chance would encrypt um, through, through some, some hole, you ultimately have the ability to roll back either in a batch process um, through the API or on an independent document level back to a version that uh, was not impacted. So again, putting a solution in the organization like M files really allows you to um, have another layer of, of protection in the risk of things like ransomware. Being able to roll back is extremely beneficial for various reasons, even ransomware outside. As we talk about ensuring that your systems remain up to date, I can't stress this enough, and I do want to ensure that those that are attending today's call, especially those that are considered administrators of M files, administrators in the IT role, that to be cognizant of these areas. Um, there's a lot of customers that have been with us, been with the solution for a long, long time. Here are the recommended biannual and annual maintenance tasks that M Files puts uh, in front of us. As we go through today's webinar, I'm also going to show you through the user guide where you can get deeper knowledge into all of these aspects that are being touched on high level here today. Making sure you're verifying and, and running that verifying repair task. There's a couple of different options, whether a quick or thorough but that really does go through the vault to make sure that all of the files and the data remain whole. Rebuilding the search index. As content is added, migrations from other systems are occurring. Making sure that you're going in and running the maintenance tasks to refresh those search indexes, whether you are running idle, whether you're running DT search or smart search, um, those are all aspects of the indexes that have to be maintained or recommended strongly to be maintained to ensure that users, as they're interacting with the system, those searches are coming back in a timely stance. Cleaning up the vaults, this goes hand in hand with just time uh, in, in the solution. What is your practice to be able to clean up, destroy data, archive data, um, age off the data that doesn't necessarily need to be in the organization. We talked a few webinars ago about our modules, our advanced um, uh, VAF modules, that part of that component actually has um, an opportunity to use one referred to as the re retention application module. So really helping you set the stage 
to run rule-based conditions to age off the data. Archiving M-Files event logs. Um, if you're using the electronic signature modules, please know that there are going to be event logs that uh, collect over time. What does that look like in your organization? Have you cleaned it up? Have you reviewed it? Do you need to archive it off? Those are all good discussions to um, put in front of you uh, on um, potentially a, a biannual or annual basis at minimum. When we talk about vault thorough optimization, this is a task out of the box that mFiles administration actually configures on your behalf. It is now, with August's release, available to configure vault by vault versus across the board for the server. So if you have needs to stagger that thorough optimization task, you now have the ability to do that on a vault by vault basis. When mFiles is configured, again, out of the box settings, does set this job up to run on Saturday evenings. You can see in front of you a lot of the aspects of a thorough optimization and why monitoring the success of this job is extremely important. This alone can bring additional ability for that system to function for users day after day as it's going through making sure things are uh, where they need to be within the tables. It's rebuilding indexes, optimizing it where it needs to be. So again, monitoring what's occurring, making sure the thorough optimization, the scheduled aspect is running. You also have the ability that, the, uh, that you can run a manual optimization. The primary difference is manual allows us to clean up some um, additional files that don't necessarily get cleaned up through the scheduled. Again, week by week, the schedule is sufficient for what um, mFiles is recommending. I will also mention for those that are running a SQL database, you still want to be doing the administrative functions through, through the lens of the mFiles administrator tool. They have tools within their optimization, rebuilding the indexes, um, and others that are meant to do the cleanup necessary on the mFiles database structure. And actually, you want to ensure that you continue to use the tools mFiles has built in to complete those steps. Maintaining backups. Organizations have various ways that they're, they're doing backups. Again, the biggest takeaway out of this slide is to ensure not only do you have a solidified design in place for M files and other applications or servers, but that you are testing um, the content that is being grabbed from those backups. Do a simulated restore off into a test environment making sure that you can get to the data if you would be faced with having to do a complete system restore. Monitoring if it's Firebird that those backups are completing. You have a master backup inside of mFiles that we'll look at today, making sure those are completed. But again, I can't stress enough whether you use a solution like Beam where it's doing a complete server backup or whatever your preference is in the organization, making sure that you're exercising the steps needed for ensuring that you can recover at a point in time. As we get into a little bit more of the troubleshooting um, aspect, there's various logs that are available um, that really give a lens into the activity that is happening and can help troubleshoot um, challenges. The Windows event log is a very good resource to identify areas in M files that might be failing. Things like object updates um, or OCR of a document. 
um, there's various things that are going to be made available in that Windows event log that can point you into um, resolution into a particular situation. It also can help resolve if there are reports of, of um, just general end user slowdowns. Look in the Windows event log to see if you can see any pattern to what users are, are uh, reporting. Background tasks within the administrative tool of mFiles, you have the ability to see all of that activity that are happening uh, day to day. How many users are logged into the vault? What does their activity look like? How quickly are views coming back? Um, how quickly are file collection processes happening? Those are all um, made available through the background task section of the administrator. And then as mFiles has continued to develop their solution, they also have expanded on the advanced vault setting section. We will look at that where you can find it today, but things such as when a class was created, did somebody modify who a uh, common view who would have potentially had access to do so? Um, was an object checked in? Was it created? There is a, a very large list of different functions you can filter on to really see the activity that is going hand in hand with things that may or may not be reported to you. I'm gonna pause there before we go look at the administrative functions to put some, uh, connect some dots here with, with the slide. Uh, Kurt and or Dave, any questions so far? Tracy, I'm not seeing any questions at this time, but I did um, neglect to mention in the opening uh, statement, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, please send those to our attention here via the chat, and uh, we will answer those uh, as they come in. Sounds good. So you should all now be seeing the mFiles admin, and I'm going to um, kind of point out the, the main areas that uh, the, the presentation had, had focused on. So first and foremost, um, if you are at the tree level, the top tree level, you will see scheduled jobs. In here, you're going to see an example of how quickly you can identify something is not functioning as is. The scheduled jobs in this UI are going to fulfill two components. First and foremost, the master database. The user guide link that I'm going to share here and we will repost on our website is going to give you exactly what is and what is not covered in that master database. For a quick correlation to it, though, it is extremely high level. So who are my users? What might be my web configurations? Um, and of such, it's extremely small. Again, you're going to have one master database backup for every mFile server instance you have, most of you having one. The other thing that you're going to see and only see in here are backups if you have a Firebird vault. If it is SQL, you can disregard this, but if it is Firebird, this is where the backup and this ability to schedule the backups are going to be within. So not only can you define the schedule, but you can define where it's being located. As you can see in this example here, very quick for me to, to identify, there is a vault that has failed and it's given me an error of um, this, in this example, the one that was being backed up is no longer here. This is my sandbox, go through vaults left and right, um, and so, therefore, uh, it is a legit error that I no longer have this fault. As we expand, I'm going to go into the server activity monitor. I mentioned this. Um, you can see active sessions. You can see what people are doing, how quickly they're returning. These are collapsible. So, as I go to the next section, you can see objects that have been modified. Again, we're in a sandbox here today for the purpose of the webinar, but you can see um, the value that this could show, especially if users are, are reporting certain behaviors. 
by vault, we also can then get into scheduling those optimizations. So here too, you can see um, that the, in this last case, the optimization failed. Take note of why it's failing, reach out to our software solutions service team for us to help navigate through those. But I, as I had mentioned in the latest dot eight release, schedule optimizations went to a per vault um, schedule capability versus server uh, level schedule. We're gonna go into the event log. The event log is one that is extremely expanded with newer releases of M files. Again, not a great picture just because it is sandbox, but the concepts of being able to filter your views on various items. I can be as specific as what object type or what user, what class, but the biggest one, in my opinion, is what kind of event, and this list, again, is a very extensive of what you want to be looking at. Was workflow edited? Was it deleted? You can see all of the options here where you can get, uh, you know, a better look into things that may need to be looked at. The other aspect in every vault is to consider encrypting your file data. So in most every case, your file data for your database is sitting outside of um, the database engine. So if you're running Firebird and or SQL, that file data, because of the, the bulk and the size of the documents, it is strongly recommended to have that sit in a different location. One of the aspects in doing that is your ability now to be able to encrypt the file data. I know we've sent some communication about this uh, feature in the past and happy to continue our dialogue with any that would be interested in reviewing your vault and if this file data is encrypted. But what we can essentially do is come into the properties of the vault and in here, under advanced, you have an option now to enable encryption for file data at rest. What that is going to do, and before I go ahead and carry out that, you can see here uh, in, in this environment, I'm simulating file data. So documents that are stored, they're stored externally, and um, they're in a format that depending on what could potentially get into the system, they're not in an encrypted format. Again, M files will give you the ability to do that by enabling encryption for REST. I'm gonna click OK. And doing so, every new document coming into M files would be encrypted with that setting. But in order to go back into um, being able to do all of the existing, we can find that underneath maintenance and update encryption status of existing files. One thing to note, this is a maintenance task and at the point of doing this for a short period until an optimization is run on a manual stance, it will consume double the storage space required in, in your current file data. So important to take note of what your current utilization of that data volume is. Increase it to, I, I would recommend two and a half times, which can be scaled back after the process is run. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select update encryption status of existing files. And you can see again in a smaller environment, how quickly that that ran. It also did not take the vault offline. So your users can stay in there working without you needing to take and, and schedule a maintenance window. So I'm gonna click okay out of that. And I'm gonna go back into the storage location. And what you will see now is we have two files and this is why double the space is required. So 
I can feel comfortable that I do have also an encrypted of the same file. The second maintenance task would be to run a manual um, optimize. And in doing so, notice again, this is typically scheduled over a, a weekend, nighttime hours, because that vault is taken offline. However, when I take that offline and it goes through its process, the end result will be a cleanup of those files. And you can see that represented here where it had removed that duplicated file. At this point, you can scale that data volume back down to an appropriate level um, post the encryption task. It also now uh, is encrypted, is not able to be retrieved by, by anything um, if something to that nature would, would unfold. That is going to wrap the demonstration here from the administrative function. Again, high level, be checking your jobs, be checking Windows event log. If you would like encryption and us to help facilitate the steps in, in a current environment, please reach out to us so we can walk you through those steps. In closing, I want to bring mention into various resources here that everybody has access to. Um, first and foremost, when you are within M files and you go to the help guide, mfiles will bring you directly to an online user guide and by simply plugging in the search word of maintenance you can see a plethora of info that is returned this comes back to what are my daily touches my monthly touches so on and so forth and you can actually go in to read um, more details into the actual task this is a great resource um, to really put in front of not only end users, but administrators of M files. Paired with this, M files also has a community page that is accessible to any and all of our customers. This is where product resources as far as releases. Um, so if you're looking for the latest M files download, you can get that through the product resource tab. It also will um, present and publish the release notes for M files. So also a very good um, point to be able to refer back to as uh, M files is preparing for those monthly updates. Back to the Marco side and the content that we put in front of you with the help of Dave Anderson. If you are on the marconet.com site, cruise over to the enterprise content and mfiles solution. It's within here, you're gonna see a lot of links to um, the, the large majority of items that I had independently gone to. We are also preparing to make some improvements to our searchable help guide. And so along with that, um, we do have at the bottom of each page that you go to on our site, a knowledge base. This knowledge base now has a pod for specific for enterprise content management, and it is searchable as well. So if you are looking to determine um, how to scan, um, you know, any of those aspects, uh, you will be able to um, find not only the recordings, but a lot of our um, quick tip e-learning items will be published here as well. I want to wrap with one final for those that like attending not only our user group and may or may not be aware, we have also started a qu quick tip session monthly for end users. Um, and so all of those events can be retrieved. Um, again, bottom of our website, go to events and webinars, and you can see the upcoming webinars um, for those quick tip sessions.
that wraps today's content. I will ask here uh, one more time if we have any questions. Otherwise, Kurt, back to you for a drawing. Sounds great. Uh, Tracy, we do have a question that came in. Came in. Um, question is, uh, is there any concern about encrypting data at rest? Example, moving server location, or if there are any issues of losing the encryption key, we have turned, we have it turned on most of our vaults, but have been hesitant with our main vault. Yeah, so file data encryption, there are no issues with um, server migrations moving from point A to point B. There's also a, a level of database um, encryption. I did not touch on that in today's call, but would be happy to um, have one of our resources reach out to talk about those keys and uh, really that second layer of encryption that is possible. All right, perfect. All right, we are at the end of our webinar. We'll do the drawing here for the $25 Amazon gift card. And the winner is Kayla M. Congratulations, Kayla. I'll be uh, sending you an email um, uh, with the electronic uh, Amazon gift card and want to thank everybody for their time and attention here today. Hope everybody has a great day. Thank you.